Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in statics and we're going to solve problem 728. Okay, it says determine the internal normal force, shear force and moment at point C and D in the simply supported beam. Point D is located just to the left of the 10 kN concentrated load. Alright, so what we have in here is that we got a beam, we got a pin support, a pin connection at A, we got a roller support at B, a distributed load, triangular distributed load and a concentrated 10 kN law, okay? So we want to find the internal and shear forces at D and also its moments, internal moments, okay? So in order to solve this problem, we're going to first draw a free body diagram, just like always for uh, statics videos. Uh, and then we have a horizontal beam. At my point A, the pin connection can be replaced by two reaction forces, AY, and AX, okay? At B, we got a just simply supported roller, so we have a BY, just normal to it. We got the 10 kN force going down. And lastly, we have this distributed load. But this distributed load is going to be basically the force Oh, the area of a triangle. This force is the area of a triangle. One half the base, which is three meters, times the height, which is six. Okay, the base is from here to here, to four three meters, and this should be equal to nine kilonewtons. Therefore, we got nine kilonewtons going down. The only thing that we're missing now is the distance of this force, and the distance of this force from A to here is one third of the base. Well, the base is three, so one third of three is equal to one. Therefore, we got one meter from here to here. And also the distance from B to D, which is equal to 1.5 meters, okay? So we have our free body diagram. We can go ahead and perform summatorial forces. Start summatorial forces in the X, going to the right is positive. And as we can see, the only thing that we have is actually AX, positive AX, meaning that this is equal to zero. Next, we can do a summatory. And we're going to skip Y direction first, and then we're going to do moment around my point A. We're going to assume counterclockwise is positive. And what do we have? Well, we don't care about AX, we don't care about AY because the point is here. So we have the nine kilonewtons, negative because it's going clockwise times the distance which is one meter then we have the 10 kilonewtons times the distance well the distance will be from here all the way to here is equal to 4.5 meters plus by and by is positive because it's counterclockwise times six and all this is equal to zero if we solve for by and we plug that into our calculator. Let's see how much do we get. We get a total of nine kilonewtons. Okay. So now we can go ahead, perform summatory of forces in the y direction. Going up is positive. What do we have? Well, we have positive ay that we don't know. Then we got negative nine, negative 10, and then positive by, which is nine, is equal to zero. We solve for AY, so from here, we can say that AY is equal to 10 kilonewtons going up, all right? So now we simplify our problem, and what we're going to do is that we're going to solve for the, we're going to cut our beam at our interesting points, and we're going to analyze from A to C first. So if we're going to do that, let's do a free body diagram from A to C. Let me borrow the picture in here, just so we have a better analysis of it. So at point A, we knew that we found 10 kilonewtons going up for my reaction Y. And then this is my point C. Since I'm making a cut, I'm going to replace it for my normal C, my shear, force at C and moment around C, okay? And the other thing that we have is this distributed load. 
If we make a cut in here, we can see that the triangle doesn't totally finish. Therefore, we will have a square and we will also have a triangle on top of it. So if I redraw that, it will look something like this. Just like that. That distributed load looks something like that. And with the forces going down, okay? However, we can break this into a square and a rectangle just to make our area calculations easier. So we're going to have a force coming from the rectangular shape and a force coming from our triangular shape. However, what we need is this height from this rectangular since we know that the area of a rectangle is the base, which is given to us 1.5 meters times the height, but we don't know how much is this. So we're going to do a small analysis in here. We know that this triangle has to be a similar triangle if we draw a triangle just at the other end of C, you see? And the height that we need is this height of this orange line. And just by similar triangles, we can conclude that since C point C is located exactly halfway Therefore, this height is going to be half. And we know that this height is equal to 3 kilonewtons per meter. Now we can do our calculations. The base, which is 3 meters, times the height, which is also 3 meters, should be equal to 9 kilonewtons. Okay. And then we also have, uh, I'm sorry, the base is not 3 meters. This base is from here to here, which is equal only to 1.5. So this is equal to 1.5, and this is no longer 9 kilonewtons. This should be 4.5 kilonewtons, which is half of it, okay? Now for the triangular shape, well, we have the original high was 6 kilonewtons. Therefore, if from here to here, is 3 then the remaining also also 3 so this triangle has a height of 3 and a base of 1.5 so we will have 1 half 3 times 1.5 and this should give me a total of 2.25 kilonewtons all right so we can erase this distributed load from here and replace it from our for our forces that we just found to 0.25 kilonewtons and the other one that we have is the 4.5 kilonewtons just right at the middle of this beam okay so let's add up our distances the distance from point a to our rectangular load has to be one third of this beam so one third of 1.5 is 0 0.5 exactly and one half of 1.5 is just 0 0.75 meters that's the two distances from point a of these two loads so now we have our entire free body diagram all we have to do is summatorial forces so for summatorial forces let's start with the x direction going to the right is positive what do we have well we have positive nc and that's all we have. Therefore, this is equal to zero. Then we have the summatorial forces in the y direction going up is positive. What do we have? Well, we got 10 kilonewtons minus 2.25 kilonewtons minus 4.5 kilonewtons plus Vz. And all this is equal to zero. If we solve for Vz, we will see how much we get. This will give me a total of 3.25 kilonewtons but negative and the reason is that is negative is because I drew it going up it should be going down okay then the last thing we have let me move this more to the left it's we're going to do a summatory of moments around my point C counterclockwise positive just like we did before what do we have well my moment at C we draw it going uh, being positive counterclockwise and then if I have a point in here, therefore this 
10 kilonewtons will be negative, so negative 10 times the distance. Well, the distance is the total distance of the beam, 1.5. Then we have the 2 and the 4.5 kilonewtons are in this direction, counterclockwise direction, therefore they're both positive, 2.25 multiply by the distance with respect to point C. Well, it's going to be the 1.5 total length of this beam minus the 0 0.5, that will give me a one. And similar to our 4.5 kilonewtons, but in this case, the distance is 0 0.75 meters and all this should be equal to zero. Okay, so if we solve for my moment at C, my internal moment at C, we will have 10 times 1.5, minus 2.25 times 1 minus 4.5 times 0 0.75 okay basically what I did is that I left this one on the left side and I moved the rest to my right side of the equation if we solve for this moment at C we will have a total of 9.375 kilonewtons times meters all right so we found our first three answers, normal at C, shear at Z, and moment at C. The only thing that we're missing is the other three forces, but from my point D. And the good thing is my point D is a little bit easier since we don't have a distributed load on this side. So if we do a free body diagram from D to V, we're going to make a cut right at D, okay? And our beam will look just like this. The support at B that we found to be 9 kilonewtons going up. Then we have the 10 kilonewtons going down at point D. And since we made a cut at point D, we have the normal that we're trying to find, the normal at D. We also have the shear at D. And we have the moment at D, okay? So all we have to do is summatorial forces, summatorial forces in the X direction, going to the right is positive, and we have that negative ND is equal to zero because there is nothing else, so therefore ND is equal to zero. Then we go for summatorial forces in the Y direction, going up is positive, what do we have? Well, we have BD is positive minus our 10 kilonewtons plus 9 kilonewtons should be equal to zero. So if we solve for our shear at D, this should be equal to just one kilonewtons, okay? And finally, the last summatory, we're going to do summatory of moments at point D, counterclockwise positive, what do we have? Well, we drew MD negative going clockwise, so negative MD. And the only force that is making any moment is this 9 kilonewtons that is doing positive moment according to our assumption. So we got 9 times the distance. Well, the distance is 1.5 meters, and this should be equal to 0. The 1.5 meters come from this drawing, free body diagram in there. So then we solve for MD is going to be equal to 13.5 kilo newtons times meter, okay? And these are our last three answers for our problem, okay? So I hope you guys liked the video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.